Hello and welcome to our Lakepoint Kids Online Family Experience. I'm Ms. Rachel and I'm happy you stopped by. Now, if you joined us last week, you might remember how we started focusing on a new theme this month. Now, it starts with the letter K, although it sounds like it starts with the letter N. It's a bit tricky that way. Does anybody know what it is? Anyone confident they know the answer? Psst, there were a couple clues right there. Anyone want to guess what it is? I can't hear you. Oh, it sounds like some of you are right. This is what we're going to be focusing on for the next few weeks. Knowledge. Knowledge is learning something new so you can be better at whatever you do. I'll count to three and then we'll say it together. One, two, three. Knowledge is learning something new so you can be better at whatever you do. And I want to become more knowledgeable about which foods sink or float. So join me as we figure this out. So I've got a container of water here along with some different food items and one at a time we're going to test them to see if they sink or float. But before testing each one, we're going to make a hypothesis, which is a fancy way of saying an educated guess whether they sink or float. So let's kick it off with a carrot. All right, let me know, is a carrot going to sink or float? Let's find out. Oh, down it went. The carrot sunk. All right, if that's what you guessed, give yourself a pat on the back. All right, next, let's try a little cherry tomato. Take a guess, what's gonna happen? Is it going to sink or float? Well, let's see. Oh, down it went, that was quick. He sunk right to the bottom. All right, well, if you guessed that he was gonna sink, you were right, okay. Now I've got a real tasty treat, a chocolate truffle. <gasps> Yummy. All right, what do you think is gonna happen? Is this going to sink or float? Let's find out. I kind of hope it floats so I can eat it after, but we'll have to see, okay. Oh no, it sunk straight to the bottom. All right, chocolate truffles do not float, they sink. Hmm, I need to find something that floats. I know, I have some raisins. Let's see what happens with the raisins. All right, I've got two raisins here. What do you think is gonna happen? Are they going to sink or float? if you're right. Oh, look, down they go. They sunk right to the bottom. All right, raisins, they sink. Okay, how about some pumpkin seeds? Yes, I have some pumpkin seeds. Let's try that. All right, do you think they're going to sink or float? What's your guess? Let's find out. Oh, down they went. One, two, three all the way to the bottom. Friends, oh, I'm noticing that everything is sinking. Hmm, wonder if we have anything that will float. I've got a few things left. All right, whoops, runaway seed. I guess swim away seed. Okay, there we go. I know, how about a pear? Let's see, what do you think is going to happen to the pear? Is it going to sink or float? Oh, oh! bobbing around a little bit. Oh, yeah, but he he ended up going down. At first I thought he might touch the bottom and come back up, but he sunk to the bottom. All right, our pear sunk. Hmm, what about an orange? Well, I guess it's a mandarin. All right, do you think this is going to sink or float? Let's find out. Oh, oh, I thought it was gonna float, but it went to the bottom. All right, if you guys sink, you are on a roll, good job. But what if we did it a little differently with this? What if we peeled it? I wonder if that would make a difference. Any guesses? All right, let's see what happens. Oops, here we go. Here is my peeled mandarin. Oh, down he went, all the way to the bottom. Well, I have one thing left to try, friends. One thing left to try. I don't know what's gonna happen to it. It's a cracker. Do you think this is going to sink or float? All right, let's see if you're right. <gasps> it's floating! Hooray, we finally found something that floats. The cracker floats, all right. If you guys float, good job. All right, it is gonna get soggy though, so then we're gonna take it out right away. Oh. Well, that was fun. We gained some knowledge today through our experiment, but you know there are other ways that you can gain knowledge too. Check out this verse in the Bible. The Lord gives wisdom. 
Knowledge and understanding come from his mouth. Proverbs 2, verse 6, Nerve. So you can actually ask God to help you discover and learn and understand things. God gave you a brain and he wants you to use it to learn all sorts of things, the most important thing being about him. All right, if you're at home, I want you to press pause and try saying the memory verse well, plugging your nose, pretending to row a boat, and swimming around the room. If you're here at Lake Point with us, then turn your attention to the stage. So knowledge, what is it again? Well, knowledge is learning something new so you can be better at whatever you do. And our bottom line or focus point of today is when you discover something new, it can change you. Let's say it together, one, two, three. When you discover something new, it can change you. So, learning whether or not a carrot sinks or flows might not have that big of an influence on you, but other things will. Here's a story that can help do just that. So we just guess what the emojis spell out? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, it could be anything, like a movie or a TV show or a president. Who knows? All right. Okay. We can try to guess them together. Sound yeah, good? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Okay. Silhouette something, music. Something a, a, uh, a. Uh, plus a plus singing, a. Sing, uh, sing, sing, uh, uh, sing Singapore. Singapore, the country. Singapore, yes. Whoa, nice job. I was not going to get that one. Uh, iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, that was easy. I spent yeah, a lot yeah. of time on my iPhone. Uh, the Searching. Mag magnifying glass fish. I don't know. There's no magnifying Search. fish, is there? Uh, fi fi finding Nemo. Yes? Yeah. I would have guessed Finding Dory, but that oh, was maybe. great job. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I love that Taco Bell. Easy. These are getting easier. All right. This one's going to be easy. S uh, needle. Sewing thread, thread and sewing thread. Television. Sewing. Th yep. Is, uh, yep. Needle. 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 Spool te needle television. And needle spool. spool. So television could be show. Oh, that's cool. Uh, like needle spool, spool. Spool and spool. Show. Needle spool and sewing. Sewing and sewing show. I have no idea. Do you have any ideas? No idea. <gasps> no. Oh. Needle in the thread. Hello, everyone. I'm Steven. And I'm Brandon. And this is the So and So Show. Oh, oh that's what it was. Okay, <laughs> I get it now. Anyway, uh, how's your uh, post-holiday time going, bud? Oh, it's been going great. No I got a deep fryer for Christmas. Oh, yeah, wow. and I've been going crazy with it. You know, I really just miss the holiday food so much. No, really, not me. No, I tend to be kind of a picky eater, so. Well, I'm sure there was still plenty of stuff at Christmas dinner for you to eat. Mm, not really. Roast beef? Not for me. Mashed potatoes and gravy? <laughs> not even a maybe. Cranberry sauce? I'd rather eat moss. Turkey and stuffing. You gotta be bluffing. Fruitcake. Mistake. Eggnog. Total slog. Hot cocoa. Huge no-no. Deep fried macaroni and cheese balls. Now that I'm into. Oh, Frankly, gosh. I'll eat just about anything that's been deep fried. Really? Yeah, I guess it makes it easier because I can't see what I'm about to consume. Hmm, well that gives me a good idea. We're gonna expand your palate today, pal. That's right. We're gonna play a little game called... Deep fried mystery. Okay, as I said before, I've been going nuts with my deep fryer. I will give you a selection of deep fried foods and you're going to try and guess what they might be before biting into them. Sound good? All right, at least I don't have to go out for lunch today. Okay. All right. Ready? Yeah. Macaroni and cheese bites. Ah. So, Brandon, what do you think it is? Um, well, I think this is, uh, this is what we've talked about before, the thing that started this whole conversation. I think this is a macaroni and cheese bite. Yeah. Mm, this is so good! Yeah, well, I wanted to start you off with something easy. Mm -hmm. Next! Right. A fried Oreo. Mmm. So, what do you think it is? Can I, can I touch it? Yeah. All right. Kind of looks like a vanilla wafer or a macaroon or something oh. like that. Does it? Yeah. <laughs> Can I try? 
You can You're making yeah, me try. nervous. Yeah. Okay, here, here. Mmm. Oh, good. It's an Oreo. Yeah, it's a fried Oreo. What do you think? That's pretty tasty. Yeah. Mm. Okay, want to try another one? Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> Deep fried watermelon. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It looked like half a donut or like a cinnamon roll or something. I don't know. You gotta try it. I don't like it. What do you mean, ew? It's just gross. You didn't even know it's falling yet. falling apart in my hands. Just take a bite. Okay, okay. Is that watermelon? It is! <laughs> Who fries a watermelon? I do. I did. <laughs> you have an opinion? I'm actually shocked how good it is. <laughs> These have all been winners so far. Well, we'll see how that holds up. What do you think about this next one? Next! <laughs> Salsa. <laughs> this could be anything. Is it like a fried egg? Uh, no. Like a, like cheese? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Try it. Okay, I'll try it. Mmm, spicy. Yeah. What do you think? Is it salsa? It's salsa! I've never had salsa before. And you know this stuff? would go great with tortilla chips? You don't say. Yeah. I probably would have never tried it if it hadn't been fried. See, that's the point. You don't know what you like until you try it. Mm, I like this game. Hey, but we need to get this all cleaned up. Why? Cause it's Bible story time with Cullen. Oh, of course. You got any more mac and cheese bites? I do. Today, we're in the fourth book of the New Testament, John. But before John, in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into a relationship. So at the right time, God sent a tiny baby to be born in the small town of Bethlehem, God's very own son, Jesus. As Jesus grew older, he became wiser and stronger and more pleasing to God and people, which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone. Now, you might remember that Jesus had a cousin, right? Who was six months older. His name was John, and he had been sent by God to help get people's hearts ready to hear the words of Jesus. Turn away from your sins. The kingdom of heaven has come near. People streamed out from Jerusalem and the whole region of Judea to see the show. And many people actually listened. John baptized these people in the murky water of the Jordan River as a sign that from now on, their lives would be different. I baptize you with water, but after me, someone is coming who is more powerful than I am. The Jewish religious leaders heard tales of this dynamic new guy on the scene. So they sent priests and teachers to discover just who this John was. Who are you? Are you the one God promised to rescue us? <laughs> I am not the Messiah. Well then, are you Elijah? No. What about the prophet? Nope. Just give us an answer. I'm just a messenger. But someone is standing among you whom you do not know. I am not good enough to untie his sandals. God had already spoken to John about the Messiah. God told him, you will see the spirit come down and remain on someone. He is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. Now around this time, Jesus himself came to John at the Jordan River. They were cousins, but John already knew that Jesus was special. I want you to baptize me. What? No, I need to be baptized by you. So why do you come to me? Let it be this way for now. It is right for us to do this. It carries out God's holy plan. So John dipped Jesus down into the waters of the Jordan. And as Jesus rose up out of the water, God sent his spirit to rest on him like a dove. A voice from heaven echoed, This is my son, and I love him. I am very pleased with him. Now maybe this is when John recalled God's words and put all the pieces together. Jesus was God's chosen one. The next day, John was with several of his followers and spotted Jesus walking past. Look, the Lamb of God. Unlike the religious leaders, these men were quick to hear the truth about Jesus. They hurried after him. Rabbi, 
Jesus turned to the two men. What do you want? One of them named Andrew said, Rabbi, where are you staying? Come, you will see. Andrew and his friend followed Jesus and spent the rest of the day with him. They were so amazed by Jesus that Andrew immediately went and told his brother Simon Peter that they had found the Messiah. Then Peter began to follow Jesus too. These men heard the truth about Jesus and immediately followed him. The religious leaders heard the truth, well, and didn't believe it. But some of John's followers heard what he had to say and didn't like it. Rabbi, that man who was with you on the other side of the river is baptizing people. You know, the one you told us about. Everyone's leaving you and following him. It was true. Many people had begun to follow Jesus instead of John. But John wasn't upset. You yourselves are witnesses that I said I am not the Messiah. I was sent ahead of him. He must become more important. I must become less important. Well, yeah, but are you, like, okay with it? The Father loves the Son and has put everything into his hands. Anyone who believes in the Son has eternal life. I feel like I know more already. But do you know enough to know what's next? Let's see. Yes. Yes, I know. It's time to reveal the question. Today's question is, when have you discovered something new? I've discovered a bunch of new stuff I like to eat. And I discovered that you can deep fry watermelon. Honestly, every single day is a chance to learn something new, uh, whether it's watching an educational video or uh, reading a book or just talking to someone about an experience that you've never had. Yeah, like uh, your grandparents, asking them about what things were like when they were your age. Yeah, or if you have a friend from another country, you can ask about their culture. Try to go to bed tonight having discovered something new. In fact, Brandon and I will pledge to do that right now. I'm in, but uh, we're gonna have to uh, cut the argle bargle. Ooh, what's that? <laughs> You'll have to look it up. I can't. I'm a flibberty gibbet. Oh, what's that? To the dictionary. All right. Until next time, I'm Steven. And I'm Brandon. And this was the So and So Show. We'll, we'll see, see you, you real soon. soon. Yep. Bye, everybody. See ya. All right, let's see. What do well, I Well, you said argle bargle. I said argle bargle. You said flibberty flibberty gibbet. gibbet? Flibberty gibbet. Starts, Starts with F, F L argle. Flibberty. Argyle. Anymore. Ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Ah! I caught that it. That was it. That was, you had it. Have okay. I tried this yet? I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. It might be my notepad. It looks like lasagna. Mmm, it could be fried lasagna. I did fry some lasagna. Yeah, honestly, I just fried a lot of stuff. <laughs> my shoe got into one of them right before oh, I did the okay. PB&Js. So even though John and Jesus were cousins, at some point God made it clear to John who his cousin really was. John had spent his life listening to God, and when he discovered the truth about who Jesus really was, he changed what he was doing so he could point people to Jesus. And everyone who truly listened knew that Jesus was the one to follow. That right there is an example of how learning something new can really change you. You know, we learn new stuff all the time, but just learning something doesn't really matter until you let it change your words, your thoughts, and your actions. The most important new thing you could ever learn is about Jesus. You can choose to believe in Him and follow Him, and then God's Spirit will help you to be more like Jesus. Soon that decision will show up in everything you say and do. Like, maybe you'll learn that the kid at school who you thought was really rude is actually going through a tough time at home. That knowledge can change how you think about them and how you treat them, showing patience and understanding, just like Jesus would. When you discover something new, it can change you, and with that knowledge, you can be more like Jesus. It's time to bring it home now with a small group time, so along with your parent, listen to today's instructions. First, parents share with your kids about how knowing God has changed your life, and if applicable, share your baptism story with them too. Kids, feel free to ask questions and see if you can learn something new about God from what your parents have to share. Now press pause, complete the activity, and then come back to for the second set of instructions. Now take time to do your own water experiment. Take 12 food items and write out a word from our memory verse on each one. Example like maybe on the peel or the wrapper. Or write the word on masking tape and stick it to the item. Then guess whether or not each piece will sink or float. Once you've tried them all, put all the words in order to reveal our memory verse. 
Parents, now is the time to scan the QR code on the screen or head over to the Lake Point app to fill out our online connection card. Signing our guest book lets us know who is watching and helps us stay connected to you. It also allows you to sign up for our latest Lake Point initiatives and opportunities. So kids, while your parents are busy doing that, why don't you jump up and down as if you're bobbing in the water? Just a reminder that you can go back and watch your favorite Lake Point Kids Online Family Experiences on our YouTube channel or on our Lake Point app in the Family Resources section. Thanks for tuning in today, friends. I'll see you again next week, same time, same place. Remember, when you discover something new, it can change you.